Hello, everybody. Princess Bear here. We're back at Epcot. We are going to Les Celliers. Yes, it's been far too long. We have not been since the park reopened. It's time to rectify that. That is right. This is our third trip for lunch slash dinner. Yes. Our, and we also did brunch, so we have four videos of Les Celliers. We love it that much. Yes. So remember, of course, if you're hungry, it's already too late because you're here. And we'll have more food linked below. Be sure to... Oh, Canada. You heard the girl. one of the few restaurants right now that is still serving Disney family wines. I have checked at every restaurant that we have reviewed since park opening and this is the first time. So we had to splurge and get this beautiful Fantasia wine. I would have gotten the Skywalker, but it's like twice, double the price that it is when you buy it at Hollywood Studios, which you can't do right now. Anyway. Beautiful wine. It tastes as aged and delicious as Bear's birthday. It just gets um, sweeter with each sip. I feel like I've been drinking a lot of this adult grape juice lately. But we grew up, I guess, with like nicer things. Mm, it's yeah, deep, it the right amount of sweet, and not so. too dry. It is a nice dinner Thank wine. So Say three and a half out of five plus. So Chef Tony hooked it up for me and made me this beautiful plant-based poutine. It is off menu, but apparently has always been available and I didn't know. And there's this beautiful plant-based glaze that I'm just going to, yeah. glaze is very interesting. It tastes like a reduced like glaze. I think it's got like some cheese on it too, which is like, yes. Don't mind me, I'm just I'm gonna continue eating while I talk about this poutine because, you know, that's how good it is. I to stop to breathe. I don't wanna stop to breathe. I just wanna inhale this and wait. Do you want me to share this with Bear? I suppose I should since it's his birthday. But let the record know that I don't want to share this. Never once in her life. So, plant based. I am appalled and ashamed that we did not know this was a possibility here because we have come running back here had we known. I get a little bit of everything that's for maize. This uh, the cheese actually looks melted. The fries look great. Mm. This is a keeper. Oh my god, the sauce just ties everything together. It's savory and crisp. And exactly like you expect poutine, but with none of the dairy problems. New to poutine, old hat to poutine, you need to come try this. Four and a half out of five claws. So, this looks like a stunning full and a half. 
with these delicious beef tips because apparently I didn't know this. Probably should. But they carve their own steaks here. So this is from their cuts. The sauce, bolognese. It looks absolutely decadent. Like, you know me and how I feel about desserts and sweets, but if you handed me this is a dessert just off how it looks, I would probably fall in love. Okay, I almost got it. There you go. The beef is so tender. It literally fell apart before the fry did. Like in your mouth. It just fades away. It's almost like ghost meat. But, oh my god, this is so good. I think this is better than the, uh, what did I get? Like the surf and turf version of the poutine last time? Like the lobster version. Lobster poutine? Well, it seems a little bit avant-garde. But I'm not gonna say no to seafood on anything. It's like the lobster could've used a little bit of lemon before it was put on the fries. But me liking seafood, I like it. And the, the lobster is just a little bit overpowering. I'd give this one three out of five claws. This is better, by far, easily. I'd say this is easy five out of five claws. Get this beautiful earth balance and maple sugar and salt breads. My favorite of these three, all three vegan breads, is the pretzel. So it's a go piece with a little butter and then I'm gonna just smoosh it in this sugar. So it gives you like a nice little yas. Mm -hmm. Sweet and satisfying. I love that. Next is the sourdough. I don't know about you guys, but I love me some sourdough bread. Mm -hmm. It's not like bam in your face sourdough. It's like a nice, subtle, delicious well-balanced, well-rounded bread. I love that a lot. And then I saved the best for last. Because I just like grainy breads. It's just my thing, outside of pretzels, which are the ultimate thing. So I'm gonna do this with a little bit of salt. Not a lot bit, because, you know, salt. Too much salt's not the best for you, and I, I drink, so. I get plenty of salt. Mm-hmm. Each one of these breads is delicious and unique in its own way. I appreciate them all. The toppings is what makes it. The toppings are like, yas. This sugar is so good. This is a huge win. Huge win. I didn't even know they had like all this vegan awesomeness. Mm. Yeah, I love coming here. This is like seriously one of my favorite places at Epcot and we avoided it for so many years because we were just like, oh, it's a steakhouse. And didn't even think about it. Even one of my coworkers was like, you need to go there because their food is so good. And I was just like, eh, it's a steakhouse. <sighs> Everything they have is amazing. As Monica requested, I do always now make sure that I have magic pills on hand. So I can try things as amazing as this. Pretzel bread. This beautiful maple salted butter here. Got a mouthful. I love that the pretzel bread isn't salted. Sort of kind of like a choose your own salt deal, which is always what I'm for when it comes to pretzels. It's a solid pretzel stick. I don't really roll, but still good all the same. Three out of five plus. As for the sourdough, this just smells amazing. A little bit of that butter again. Mm. 
The butter really helps us. It's a perfect amount of like butter meat saltiness without going overboard. I get the sourdough also three out of five miles. As for this grain bread, it's like pumpkin seeds and a couple other things. It's going deep here, huh? Such like a good ratio of like green and extra butter. I love they have so many options for plant based here, not just a single gluten free roll or those ones that taste like pancakes. You have three different choices which represent the restaurant, so it doesn't take away from the theming and still maintains that plant based thing. That's like the top tier. Seasonal breads, I think, is slightly above average, but the, the fact that you get choice here, it's easily a five out of five plus. We got some lovely Brussels sprouts. They are maple balsamic glazed. They are vegan. It does say on the menu. And my favorite thing about these Brussels is the the char level. Oof, this is a big Brussels. Let me let me take a smaller Brussels. Yeah. Okay. Oof. Give me that Brussels sprout. Ooh. You know what makes it amazing? The maple. The maple gives this beautiful sweetness. Mmm. So good. I really love these Brussels sprouts. They're probably some of my favorite Brussels on on property. Maybe no, maybe Polite Pig is number two. But these ones are so good. And they seem to get better every single time I come here. So I have quite the adventure ahead here with these Brussels sprouts. I always love the presentation, the cast iron skillet's a nice touch. That char on them. Alright. Maple sweetness is like the perfect pairing to the earthiness on the Brussels sprouts with the char. These are always a top tier side. Four to five plus. And then Probably our third time reviewing this. The ever so amazing dumplings with a five spice um, broth. I love the broth on this. It's very nice, it's so flavorful. And then you've got these beautiful dumplings. Now these dumplings have impossible meat in them. I believe it's the impossible sausage, right? It's regular. It's good though. This is just as good as I remembered it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I said it once already, but I'm gonna say it again. Never would have expected to have such an amazing meal at a steakhouse as a vegan. Of all the steakhouses of all, all Disney property, this is the best one for a vegan. And it's not just because I, I have a huge appreciation for Chef Tony. It's totally true. I'm not biased at all. I swear. I swear. Don't look at me like that. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the true truth. I wouldn't steer you wrong. I'm not a bear. Bear eats meat, so he steers you wrong. But me? Yes. That's the impossible dumplings. As with any um, sort of like noodle or dumpling dish. The broth is a tell. The broth is bad, usually in trouble. There's some time and love was put in this broth. Broth on its own, four to five plus. That's the dumpling. Like handcrafted with impossible meat. We have to try this one day at the house. I don't think it'd be that hard. We've made dumplings before. But They're hard to make though from scratch. They are hard to make. They do take time. But may it be worth it with impossible meat? You guys let us know in the comments. Mm. 
the versatility of Impossible Meat never ceases to amaze me. Burgers, Bobby's, Impossible Sausage, Meatballs, it always seems to be able to take on something new while still achieving your plant based goals. That's a solid four to five plus. I think I, it's actually improved. The very first time we had this was what, a couple years ago? It was extremely salty. Almost being an edible. Now it is completely balanced. The broth is great. It's like one of those meals you just pick apart piece by piece. Definitely four out of five plus. Now, for my main course. I've tried every steak here, except for this one. I tried the filet. I tried the New York strip. I never tried the ribeye, which for you purists out there, it's apparently 16 ounces. It's cooked medium rare. If you don't roast me in the comments for it. It's super easy. Pick in the middle. Put some char on the outside. It lets the prime rib be the prime rib. It gets out of your way. This is a nice classic prime rib. It's done really well. Cooked really well and it's super tender. I would still say that this maintains their title of the best steakhouse at Disney property. You can fight me over that any spend any day of the week. I will happily debate you guys on that in the comments. Jake? I would think that the filet is slightly better, but if you're looking to get full, there's this. I give this one a three and a half out of five plus. Give me these little potatoes like a mustard glaze. On a really nice solid side. Three out of five plus. So, here in Slayer, I got my birthday moose. Definitely with the candle that I already blew out. But, it's happy birthday with moose. I'm assuming this is edible white chocolate with the printing on it. A little maple leaves in his head. We have some like Oreo cookie on the bottom. Let me take a magic pill for this just in case. So what should I take for his nose and eye? Eye and ear. Just enough decadent birthday goodness. The mousse. It's nice and smooth and chocolate leaving out over the top. Got a little cookie crumbs on the top and the M&M is just like that sparker magic. I'm not rating the breakfast stuff. But I definitely approve. Best dessert in Epcot. And the fact that it, yeah. I can't, I can't even begin to tell you how amazing this is. We don't even have a reserve at Coral Reef, but we got the Bailey's dessert, you guys. And he gave it to us with some strawberries and some dark chocolate and some nuts. You know this is gonna be so much better than anything that we had at Coral Reef. I promise, promise, promise. <laughs> Oh, you're still here. Why are you here? This dessert's amazing. Go away while I finish my food. Um, I'm thinking about the last time I had this, we were and we ordered it for the princess, but I actually ended up eating most of it. I think we talked about that. If you look at like the time lapse at the end, 
it disappears and it's like all my spoon and none of the princesses. This addition of strawberries has me curious. Yeah, you're right. I don't want to try this. That is still amazing. I'm gonna find a pause. So we just finished that. The Cilier. I just wanted to be known that Chef Tony is my favorite chef of all of Epcot. I do not think they understood that from the meal that we just had. When you come to, to Epcot, if it is not a festival and you don't want to eat at the stands, you need to come to La Cilier. It doesn't matter if you're vegan, doesn't matter if you're non-vegan. The food was amazing, of course. Yeah, the, the food was good. I finally had the final steak on the menu I hadn't tried yet. The Brussels were as good as always. I love that dessert. It's like a twist on the same one from Coral Reef. The moose moose was cute. The and I, I actually do prefer Chef Tony's version of the Bailey's almond cake versus the one at Coral Reef. The strawberry adds a little The makes strawberry it really makes it like that much better. Plus that, that uh, dark chocolate yeah. in with the strawberry. It just is it's like an elevated element of that already amazing cake. Okay. So we want to know, what do you think, Lucilia? Have you been here recently or is it on your list? Or what's your favorite birthday spot here at uh, Walt Disney World? Does it have to be Epcot? Let us know in the comments your favorite place to go for your birthday, loved one's birthday, child's birthday. Yeah, anyone's we birthday. We want to hear from you. And all, as always, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the video.